So we can say overall, by and large, there's many different ways. I'm going to just describe very briefly three approaches. One would be sort of the workshop approach. With a workshop approach to training workers in a church, you say, we're going to have a practical training. We come together, maybe it's on a Saturday, and I'm going to do a preaching workshop. Now, we're not just going to talk theory about preaching for, for several hours. What we're going to do is we're going to take a specific Bible passage, and I'm going to walk you through the steps of how I would prepare a sermon on that Bible passage, how I would interpret it, how I would uh, maybe structure my sermon, how I might have illustrations or apply that. It's going to be very practical. So we have this workshop, and I've done this, by the way. We used to do that. We wanted, we said in the Munich area, if we want to plant churches with lay people, we've got to train lay preachers. Let's have workshops. We can't send them all to seminary. So we would have a Saturday workshop. Only those people were invited, by the way, who were going to preach. We didn't want people who said, oh, that sounds interesting. I think I'll come. We said, no, no, if you come, you're going to preach. Hmm. All of a sudden, the motivation level goes like that. People get motivated when they say, wow, I'm actually going to have to stand in front of people and preach. Wow, I'm going to pay attention, all right. So we have a practical Saturday workshop and very practical. They may work through a Bible passage. They may even preach on that very passage that we worked through in our workshop. Problem with most workshops is they're listen shops. They're not really workshops. People just come and sit and listen. And it's really the old passive school model. So make your workshops practical where people are actually applying the kinds of things that you want them to learn. So you're going from knowing to doing. There's certain theory, certain knowledge, but then get them practicing doing right with it. So workshops are a great way for basic sort of ministry skills. Somebody's uh, going to preach for the first time. Uh, somebody's going to do visitation. Very practical. Then there's also training that you might do in a ministry team. Now let's suppose you have a youth ministry in your church and you've got several workers, volunteers that help lead that youth ministry. Well, usually those people are meeting together for, to plan things uh, regularly. Maybe they meet every week, maybe they meet once a month, but they have their regular meetings and they plan out who's going to do what and what's the program going to be and who are the problem kids and all these kinds of things. That's what you do, right? Well, I've often said, and we did this in our church, why don't you take, if you're going to have a two-hour meeting, why not take some of that time for equipping? In other words, take some time, maybe you read a book about youth ministry. Maybe you need to get an expert to come in from another church who's a really gifted youth minister. Get that person to come in and give you some ideas. There's different ways you can draw on resources to equip those workers. And I call this a do, no, do approach because those workers in that ministry, and they're already doing the ministry, whether they're very well equipped or not. So what we do is you say you're involved in the ministry, you've got all kinds of practical questions because you're doing it. And so you come together and you may talk about some ideas about how to improve the ministry and then you go back and do it again. One of the advantages to this is that you're integrating the learning with the actual ministry doing. And again, so it's not just some theory that someday down the road you might use, but you're really dealing with the issues that, that are, are burning and saying, how can we do this better? So it's very relevant. And then a third approach is just individual instruction, where I get together maybe just one-on-one -on -one with another person and say, you know, I think you've got a gift as a preacher and you attended the preaching workshop, but let's get together and let's meet and I'll help you develop your preaching skills better. I'll give you some feedback or some ideas on how you could do this better. And so it's, a, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one sort of training or sometimes just simple skills like how to share your faith with somebody else. You go one-on-one. -on -one. And one of the approaches, so this is much more personal, so it's sort of a B, like character, do, and no, it's very integrative. One of the real simple sort of ways is to model ministry. This idea, I'll do it, you watch while I do it. Now let's do it together. Now you do it and I'll watch. Now you do it alone. 
and now you train somebody else to do it. And so we might take something like how to share your faith with another person. So we go out and I bring you along with me and I get in a conversation with a person and I, I tell them my story and I share the gospel with them and you're just kind of watching. So I said, well, now you saw how that works. Let's go do this together. Now, why don't you, you know, I'll start the conversation, then you, you pick it up and we'll, we'll kind of help each other out. So we try that. And we say, okay, next time you're going to do all the talking. I'm just going to listen. Uh, and I give you feedback and, you know, we talk later, but you're the one kind of doing it. And I say, okay, now you're on your own. You can do this. And then, um, but you don't stop there. You need to now do the same thing with somebody else. See, this is very easily repeatable. You can do this with evangelism. You can do it with discipleship. The T for T idea that we talked about uh, with church planning movements is very basic. It's very simple that anybody can kind of easily reproduce. We talked about this with Bible storying. I tell the story. You watch how I tell the story. Now, you can tell the story, and I give you feedback. And Jesus kind of did this with his disciples too. He modeled ministry. They just watched him for the first year. They didn't have any responsibility then to just observe. And then he says, okay, now you go do it. And then he gives them feedback. They come together and one time they say, wow, we're rejoicing. Even the demons are subject to our name. Jesus said, eh, don't rejoice in that. Rejoice as your name's written in heaven. Huh? He says, yeah, don't, don't, you know, it's great that that happened, but you're a child of God, and that's what you should be rejoicing about. You know, don't get a big ego about this. Um, and then in another situation, they came back and said, we couldn't cast out the demon. Oh, really? Okay, what's the problem there? This kind only comes out with prayer and fasting. Okay, so, so Jesus sort of has the, the debriefing, as it were. They go out, they minister, they come back, they talk about it. That's kind of the way Jesus trained. It's just very easy to reproduce. Sometimes we make things too complicated, and then reproduction doesn't work very well. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com.